Awesome. Uh, well, first of all, congratulations, because uh, you succeeded where many people failed in getting a new Fletch movie made. <laughs> well, thank you. It's, you know, I, I, I read the articles about and got some insight into how, why those fell apart. Uh, to be honest, I think the reason John and I were able to do this is that we were we were told if you make it for this amount of money and in this short amount of time, yeah. we will let you guys do your thing. So, you know, we had to make a we had to make a modest film. We couldn't, you know, I have I have seen a couple of reviews that say, well, I really missed the car chases and the big set pieces of the original film. And I'm just like, well, I couldn't afford those. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't wasn't going to happen. I don't know. And like, I, you know, I was interested in every version of this movie. I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan. So like the, the days of like, yeah. Kennedy, you know, Fletch one, I would have loved to have seen his version. Yeah. Cause he's, his was the prequel. Version. Yeah. He, um, he read the script to like uh, on his fan club, like last year, this year. And it was good. It was, but it was, you know, it was a talky Fletch movie. And I think that's where people, where, where like the charm of Fletch is. Like I told someone after I saw it, it's John Hamm being a smart ass for 90 minutes and I am here for it. Like, that's what I want out of Fletch. I don't really care about the car chase. I want him to, to just be the smartest person in the room who sort of cares the least, you know, like him saying five <laughs> yeah. every time he leaves an Uber is way more clever than the car chase in an Uber that, you know, the 10 more million would have got you. Um, I, I'm glad you feel that way. Um, that's certainly, and that's certainly what we endeavor to do is to take our limitations and, 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 and try to do the most with what we had. Um, I mean, yes, I, I obviously in, there's a difference between the, the way the characters, you know, the way John's coming at it versus the way Chevy Chase came at it. Um, but we, you know, some of the things in the Chevy version were his innovations and it's his comic persona and he's brilliant in it. Um, but it's different than the character in the books. Yeah. So uh, we decided, well, let's kind of go more that way and, and see if we can make it work. It's well, as you watch it and you, and you realize, okay, so there is a, a murder mystery going on and there's an art theft going on, but as much as anything, it's okay. He is interacting with various people and just doing his thing. And that's, that's what works the best. So it is, it is funny that, you know, I'm sure, it was a hassle and they're like, okay, here's the amount of money and time you have. Please, please go away. And if you can do it all the better, that's the stuff that works the best because it's so purely, I think what people remember from a Fletch movie, like you said, like he's not playing Chevy Chase. He's not even fully doing like the Gregory McDonald character, but it feels right. And you remember that way more than, oh, well they had to, they had to have a shootout at the end. You know, that's, you know, it, it works, but it's not what you remember. You remember, his interactions with the police when he calls the police. He's like, well, I called you guys, you know, like just the way he delivers lines is what you remember. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I love, I love talky comedies. I love yeah. dialogue driven stories. And I love, I love, and I love also, you know, when the dialogue and the comedy comes out of the comedy comes out of behavior and dialogue is a form of behavior um, a little more than just, you know, rapid fire one liners. Yeah or pop culture references and the things that, you know, more mainstream movies do a lot of. And I felt like, you know, we've got that. We've got that in spades. Let's let's try and do something else. And it's something you have experience in. I mean, the Day Trippers, Superbad, Adventureland, like they count as talky comedies and they succeed because of it. You know, you if you ask someone the plot of those movies, it's a, it's a very quick conversation. Not yeah. so, it, the brevity is actually to its point, you know, Superbad, oh, we gotta go get beer for the party day trippers we're on a day trip from long island you know adventureland I'm, I'm working in a shitty amusement park it's the brevity of that allows you to be like oh well what's your favorite moment it's a conversation it's always a conversation in those movies and and fletch benefits from that i mean one of the things when i first uh, the first time i experienced super bear was a table read uh that we were doing when i was working on jet Aptel's undeclared and seth read seth and J and jason siegel read evan and what I immediately loved about it was like, oh, these characters, as outrageous as they are, they're totally naturalistic. Yeah. This is this this I know this is in my wheelhouse because I'm I I'm I'm very interested in psychology and behavior, and I and I see these guys and I see how they would, you know, and and I I see them like living in a typical teenage world of toxic masculinity, and they're drowning in it. And they're trying to figure out how to you know how to behave, and it's all about behavior. And then of course you have Jonah Hill come in. And just make that character come to life in a way that uh, no one else who read for it could, because he just got it. 
and he's yeah, Jonah. And yeah, he's there's, there's, <laughs> so, a re- there's a reason there's retrospectives about that movie. There's a reason why, you know, Adventureland is always seen as like, oh, this underrated comedy that like, if more people had seen would have been huge. It's because of those, those moments, you know, you don't, how many of them come, I mean, they're harder to make nowadays, but how many of them come out and just, they have their weekend or day on VOD, whatever it is now. And then they're, they're gone. You know, I, I saw Seth at, at Toronto and he was talking about, you know, not a lot of comedies get talked about 10 years later, 15 years later. Like that's the mark of does it work is far removed from, oh, I remember seeing it. Do you remember it when you're talking about it as almost a generation removed? And, and you've made a couple of them. So that's you're defying the odds. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice of you to say. I mean, I feel, especially in the age of streaming, um, you know, and and the fact that comedies have largely disappeared from yeah. the big screen. I mean, it's, it, it, there's there's the occasional really big one, or or one like Bros, which has which has a, a social message in it, and I can't wait to see it. I'm sure it's going to be good. amazing. Very yeah, good. I'm sure it's really going to be hilarious. But there's not that many of those. Oh. I mean, even even with Judd um, out there, there's only a few that get to get a real distribution. Yeah. And so a lot of them are going straight to streaming and, and then they just sort of feel like they're treated like content, disposable content. Um, I mean, it seems like there's a new Kevin Hart movie on Netflix every couple of months. And I, it's like, if I didn't happen to just come across the little box on my screen, I wouldn't even know yeah. it existed. Um, it's, with- yeah, like it, there's good and bad to it. Like I'm sure there, I'm sure these things are being watched more than we realize, even though you get very like vague words. Sure. Here. Even from filmmakers, you know, I, I've talked to people like, oh, how'd your movie do? Like, well, Amazon told me good. And then they didn't return <laughs> my calls after that. So I'm, they're happy. They want to work with me again. But I don't know how many people saw my damn movie. Yeah. But at the same time, like you were saying, it's just a, it's a box on a screen. And you lose the little bit of like I, a thing that is definitely not a thing anymore is going to see a movie at the theater, that being sold out and being, well, I'll watch this other one and discovering it that way. Nobody does that anymore. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, you know, this is the kind of medium small uh hollywood comedy i have no i have no illusions that it's it's an indie it it is kind of an indie film but it's not an art house film uh and i love art house films and i'd love to try and make some more but it's but it's a it's a, a thing that's really yeah rare it is it is literally that kind of movie that yeah the big movie was sold out so i went to this other one and i and i i'm glad i did yeah, well, that's so. you know, that's like for me, it was always, you know, I grew up in New York, the, the Channel 11 movie on like Saturday would always be like a medium, small either comedy or like something your, your dad probably wanted to watch. So that's how you discovered it. And how yeah. he probably saw it was, well, you know, Empire Strikes Back was sold out. We were going to wait. We just went to another movie in between and we saw <laughs> Brewster's Millions. You know, we saw Real Genius, whatever the thing was. And suddenly that's yeah. the movie everybody loves. And, you know, that's. That's what that's what this movie should be like. The movie is great. So it, you know, in another world is that movie that like, OK, everyone's going to see Top Gun. But what's what's let's see Fletch in the meantime. And you come out going like fucking Fletch. And like we did a John Hamm double feature. Didn't even know it. Like it <laughs> used to be a thing that happened. I know. Well, I grew up on Long Island and I, I spent many an entire day sneaking from screen to screen at the Massapequa Mall yeah. um, <laughs> multiplex. <laughs> Uh, it was, yeah, it was like, you know, one of our parents would drop us off and, and we'd say, we'll see you in three movies. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's what it was. No, it's, but I mean, you know, watching at home isn't as bad as I think people worried about, you know, when, when the pandemic hit and it was like, well, it's that or nothing. You, you adjust it pretty quickly, but there is something to be said for like, I want to laugh with other people. Like I, I probably have to see bros again because I, I probably missed 15% of the dialogue because the laughter in a theater oh, sure yeah you know the it's almost like some movies know it but, but you you don't want them to have that person but they they build in the moment before the next line you never want yeah. them to assume laughter but when something's working well you're you almost wish there was a little more of that actually what, what did billy agner say because <laughs> i'm still laughing yeah. at the last thing uh and, and yeah you know, this one it would have been the same way like every like the annie mola scene with with john ham that's just instead of fletcher's our funny guy and everyone else is puzzled by him he was an even weirder person just completely bouncing off him. And he's like, am I the normal one in this? You know, like there's so many yeah, comedic yeah. set pieces in this that are, you know, they probably didn't even cost a dollar more than anything else, but they work and they height they much, much more than a, than a, than a car chase. Um, 
Well, I do hope I do hope people feel the way you do. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like uh, it's we didn't do like a ton of the uh, same amount of improvisation as I, I might have done in something doing working with Judd. But even on Superbad, we didn't do the level of improvisation that that we might have done, like on Undeclared or something. It was because those guys wrote such a great script. I mean, there's really funny runs by people like Jonah and Bill Hader and, you know, that they came up with on the spot. Don't get me wrong. Those, those people are fucking amazing. But, uh, and Michael, um, but, uh, you know, having such good seasoned actors or comedy people or people who do both, they always brought something. They always had ideas for lines or behavioral things and everything. They just helped elevate each scene. Um, which, uh, which is good when yeah. you're working fast. <laughs> I, I would, oh yeah. I would imagine the two hardest things here are just getting the script to a point where I feel like I have Fletch's voice <clears throat> because it is such a specific character and everyone's done it somewhat of a different way, but there is, I think there's a way that people, whether they read the book or watched the movies, think of, okay, this is how Fletch talks. And then finding, right. the, because I think in the wrong hands, he's an asshole. And like, that's the thing. He's never an asshole. He just, people think he is. Like, that's that's always how I envision Fletch. So yeah. How do, you, yeah. How, do you, how do you get yourself to a place where you're happy with that? Obviously, you know, John does a great job and is a statue, a, le- a level of an actor where a movie can get made. But how do you circle through people and also have the script ready? It, that It seems like, so much of the work is before it starts on this one. We, I, I did a lot of drafts and yeah. and we took the temperature people that uh, love the Fletch books. For instance, John uh, is on the show Good Omens and, and he's friendly with Neil Gaiman because of it. Yeah. Neil Gaiman loves the Fletch novels. Neil Gaiman is fucking Neil Gaiman. Yeah. I, I really respect the dude. So he was kind enough to read one of the drafts and, and I was very nervous because I thought, you know, if he thinks that we're not getting there, um i have a lot more work to do and he was very nice about it he said he really thought that it was capturing the book he he loves that book he felt like it would, it sounded like fletch to him and then he gave me like two story notes that were great and really helped me break a few things that i couldn't figure out yeah. um so yeah i i let people read it and and i um and i let you know sometimes we would let comedy friends read it like robert carlock who john knows from 30 rock and and he he gave me advice like, yeah, I think you're not quite doing enough with um, uh, Roy Wood's character, the cop who's got a baby at home. I think oh. you know, it came up a couple of times and he said, I think th- there's more fun to be had with that. And it's a, and it's a good character train. Cause, and so like then I added him having his baby strapped to his yeah. chest in the scene. Sure. Which what was an a- easy fix that suddenly you're like, oh, I get it. I get why that needed that little extra bit. Yeah, I just needed just a little bit of real life absurdity yeah. to 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 turn the scene. Um, and once Roy had the idea, of, like let's put my because he's always hanging, his badge is always hanging around. So let's just put the badge on the baby's butt. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. You know what a, what a, what a moment. Um, and then just with with John, you know, like that's I think that's where everything like had gone wrong in the prior installments was they just couldn't agree on who would play Fletch, whether it was the Kevin Smith version with Jason Lee or like. I think Bill Lawrence and Zach Braff were going to do it at one point. Like they always yeah. was a. Yeah. Jason Sudeikis was attached at one point. And they all would have worked, but like, I don't know why this works so much better. I mean, you do, you cast it. But like, what made you know that it worked? Cause I don't know that I would have thought it, but when you see well, it, it works. I think a lot of people, like when it was announced, you know, I saw a lot of Twitter people saying, well, that's a terrible, that's terrible casting. And I think they're thinking of Chevy. They're thinking yeah. of who's going to be like Chevy, but I th- I think probably at the end of the day, um, all three of those actors we just mentioned are great. Yeah, and there might have felt the pressure to play it like Chevy. And the only difference with John is John was like, I can't play it like Chevy. I don't have like those comedy skills. I'm a different kind of actor. I will do it a different way. Even if I try to impersonate Chevy, that would you know that'd be a disaster. Whereas you could see Sudeikis or Zach Braff or Jason Lee kind of being doing some of the same things you know uh that the chevy did and 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 it's working yeah. but also feeling kind of like i've seen it before yeah same with like, um, a, like a ryan reynolds like everyone would be like oh that's perfect casting but you're yeah. like, but you kind of know exactly the performance you're going to get and that's not a bad thing but also if no. you're really getting to make it and you're making your version why not have someone who's going to do their version 
and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I think the the I don't mean to say that any of those actors would have they all would have been great. I would have no, loved to sure. have seen all those versions. I just think the shadow of Chevy looms large, and I have <laughs> to assume that had something to do with, um, you know, this is like Chevy's pretty much this and vacation are his signature roles. And, and um, yeah, and he really made it his own in a, in a hilarious, totally memorable way. So I think, you know, I think there's the nervousness. I know I remember right. Uh, like Kevin Smith, the Harvey Weinstein said, no, it's not going to be Jason Lee. It's going to yeah. be Ben Affleck. And, you know, it just sort of gets the point of like, well, that's not how I see it. And, yeah. and, and everyone, no one wants to fuck it up. No, nobody's wrong but everybody realizes like, well, only one of us is going to be right. And I don't want to be the wrong one because I'm going to get blamed. Yeah. Even though like everyone here can do it, which is a credit to you for seeing in John Hamm. I think it was foolhardy. I have been super nervous the whole time. <laughs> I was like, oh God, why did I, is this a huge mistake? And, and, you know, um, and, you know, it's not going to be for everybody. There's some people who love the original so much. I think that they're just going to have a hard time accepting it, but that's fair. You know, any, any opinion is fair, whatever. someone experienced something, you know, if it doesn't make them laugh, it doesn't make them laugh. So uh, you just got to try and find the people who sensibility lines up. Well, you found one. So there you go. And, <laughs> Thanks, uh, man. and listen, then the reviews were, I think are pretty solid. I, uh, yeah, it's at 81% of Rotten Tomatoes. I pulled it up like literally right now. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I feel people, a lot of people have been very kind to it. Um, yep. And I'm, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. Well, you should, uh, you should be very proud of it. And, and listen, I, I honestly didn't realize you had, you had made it because I would have been even more excited because Adventureland is, is your best movie. Like, and they're all great, but like, there's something Thanks, about man. that. Listen, I worked in Astroland in Coney Island as a, as a teenager. <laughs> I was like, I oh, feel seen in this movie. Um, <laughs> yeah. But that, that it's, there, at, there is a through line to like the guy who made the day trippers making confess fledge and you see it and it's just it never feels like this was an assignment it feels like i wanted to make a fledge movie and that sounds like the most fun thing in the world so like how could you yeah not? no it was it was it was a challenge and it was great and i thought this is so different than anything else i've done and then i got to the end of it and i said oh i guess it's not actually yeah. <laughs> um so so you know it's i guess you can't escape yourself yeah, like, but i think i have a style <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like yeah uh so yeah and it's a little you know i've always i've always felt a little indie at heart so yeah. the movie's a little indie at heart and you know the books are a little indie at heart they're oh. not he didn't he doesn't play it straight at all no nor, nor oh. should he. but uh i know this is your last one so i want to wrap up and just say congrats again it's this was fun and the movie's fun like how can you not get a kick out of watching john ham do fletch because yeah he's not doing chevy chase he's doing fletch yeah, and 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 I made sure he like screws up and makes yep. mistakes and is wrong sometimes because it would be really obnoxious to watch John Hand be right for ninety minutes. Yeah, he's he's already he's already <laughs> won at life. Like he's, yeah, he's, he's already good. won. So it's like you know, I kept saying to the DP, "Can we make him less handsome in the shot?" I'm just too I'm just too bitter about Somebody it. Somebody walk over and slap him in the face <laughs> before we start shooting. Quick, he'll be fine. Yeah, right? okay, pre-approved. Um, <laughs> Well, thank you so much. This was thanks, this was Joey. I hope uh, I, I hope we could speak again on another film. I, I wrote a, a very personal movie that's probably closest to Adventureland of anything else I've written. So maybe it's someone will let me make it and we I'm can in. talk about it. It won't have any amusement parks in it because eh, you did that. Yeah, it's anyway. it's a, it's a sort of it's a torment. But you know, yeah, no, you know. hives as you walk by. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I can't wait for that. Thank you so much for doing this. Thanks, Joey. Uh, and get some rest. Oh, eventually. <laughs> Go into the back <laughs> gate and then I'm doing that. All right. Be yeah, well. See you, man. Bye. You too.